I'm, this is 55 when I arrived in London, and I was got this job in Collins, um, which had, uh, was a folk record shop. Collins had lots of different sorts of shops dealing in different sorts of subversion around London, around the West End. Um, and this was this is a folk and jazz, folk on the ground floor, jazz in the basement. And you get all sorts of people. I mean, uh, Carla Kramer, who used to come in, you know, a fellow who ran a Squire Records, a jazz drummer. Uh, he was amazing because he used to be his own salesman and come in and sell his own Squire Records. And he was blind, and it just never seemed to be any hindrance to dash around the West End of London with a bag of records and a white stick and uh, and sell. It was full of remarkable characters, including that Joseph, who came in. He'd finished Cambridge. He'd been in America for about a year, I think. He, he decided he was going to have a look around what was going on there. And he came back, I think, deeply impressed with, with show business. He was, he was deeply in love with show business. There was a great educationalist streak running through that. There were many streaks running through that, but education was one of them. Um, so self-improvement and stuff like that, learn a language. But he got this other idea of, of folk music. He'd heard about this folk music thing. When I went down to London from Shipley, Bradford area, and started working at Topic, the fellow I'd been working with and, and we'd had this Workers' Music Association branch going on, he started a folk club in Bradford and called it the Topic Folk Club. And that was the, probably, probably the first folk club. It's not absolutely sure. There are books that have been written by academics who say that Ewan McCall started a folk club in 1953 and of course it's now been beautifully typeset in times New Roman and so it must be bloody true, wasn't it? Collett's had a record shop in Hampstead and it was, it was a classical record shop and it had a high reputation highly thought of by people who liked their music. There was also a, a, another record shop just farther up Heath Street on the other side that was bigger and I think had quite a following as well. Anyway, Heath Street, not even Heath Street was big enough to hold two classical specialists within 100 yards of each other. And Collett's decided that um, they were going to get rid of, uh, of, of their Hampstead record shop. So he bought, he bought the Hampstead, uh, call it the Hampstead record shop and, and Transatlantic worked from there for a period. And I, and I left Collett's and worked in the shop to, for a period, but in the main I was there working on any of the record production stuff that came along, editing stuff and so on, it became more technical. I was still working on a voluntary basis with Topic, um, spare evenings and things like that. So I was beginning to, you know, build a bit of a freelance portfolio, as it were. And he, he suddenly heard about this roughneck Irishman called the Dubliners, and decided he wanted to go across and sign them up. Nap's day would be perfect if he could, uh, if he could buy up a new business in the morning, sue the arse off somebody in the afternoon, and put on a show in the evening would be a perfect day for that. And he had the energy to do it. And he knew how to go about these things. He was quite an amazing character. 